But this is an idea that I had back in 2008, actually. Just the idea that you could use laboratory-style optics and explode them to architectural scale gave me the insight that you could actually take sunlight and move it from one place to another. When I discovered the existence of this crazy um, abandoned trolley terminal under the Lower East Side, you know, one of my favorite neighborhoods, just the idea of uh, using that technology on this ancient, forgotten, neglected space, all of a sudden gave us the opportunity to create something green, public space really, that uh, could serve a community that doesn't really have very much public space. I'm James Ramsey. I'm the creator of The Low Line. Right now we're sitting in The Low Line Lab. This is something that uh, I and my partner Dan Barish uh, have been working on since then. And no one asked us to do this. You know, it wasn't some sort of like mayor's office RFP or anything like that. You know, if we didn't take this on, who would? We just decided to just give it a go and see if we could actually take this crazy idea, which actually really solves for so many issues and is uh, hopefully pretty inspiring. How do we take this crazy idea and make it real? And so that's a process that we've been pursuing for the last seven something years which is a year-round test facility for us to test out all the crazy technical ideas that we have for implementation of the actual low line. The low line is an effort to build the world's first underground park in the heart of New York City's Lower East Side. The idea is to take over an abandoned historic trolley terminal and channel natural sunlight into the space through a new type of solar technology so that we have the ability to grow plants and trees and to create a vibrant and much needed public community space we can maybe serve as a bit of a, I don't know, a prototype for all sorts of things around the world, right? The world's population is gonna live in these mega cities by 2050. We have this ever increasing density and we have to worry about stuff like, okay, how are people gonna have enough water? How are they gonna have enough electricity, transportation? But also, how is this, you know, city, these urban environments, how are they even gonna be livable, right? And so, I think that we've actually been kind of fortunate to stumble across two things that we've been able to spearhead, right? How can we actually begin to be innovative and look to technology and design as solutions to create public space, which is, you know, a really sort of basic building block of livability. And also, if the municipal government uh, is not doing something, how can you go about just doing it yourself, where it's like a grassroots movement, a huge number of people at the bottom, coming together and creating something, not something that's been dictated from the top down. And it uh, very quickly became the sort of largest crowdfunded public design project ever at that point. It was kind of an amazing, you know, sort of call to action for us, really, and something that told us, all right, we're not a bunch of crazy people um, doing something completely out of our minds. This is something that really actually kind of resonates with people, and, you know, we should get off our asses and, and really do this. So right now we're standing in the entrance to our low-line lab to test the future lighting and landscape behind the, the future low-line park. Our ultimate goal is to take over an abandoned one-acre trolley terminal and turn it into a glowing underground park for all New Yorkers to enjoy. So right here we can see some of the history of the Lower East Side. I think it's important to look to the past so as to figure out the best way to design for the future. The Lower East Side has always been a very dynamic area. This is where waves of immigrants landed at the turn of the century. Right now it's actually the widest street in Manhattan. Um, in reference to where we're standing right now and in reference to the future development coming to the area. So right here we can see both the abandoned site as it exists today as well as the historic site when it was formerly uh, in use in the early 1900s. It actually had a relatively short lifespan for such a big piece of infrastructure. For almost 70 years it has been completely abandoned. The site is almost maybe the most intact relic of our trolley car pass, which a lot of New Yorkers don't necessarily know about because we don't have above ground trolleys operating around our city anymore. And this board describes a lot of the work that we've done over the past few years. We've also been working really close with youth over the years. This is one of the things that we're most excited about is our Young Designers program. And this is something that we're going to continue to expand and grow over the years. We're really excited about a lot of the work that we, we have done to, to lead us up to this point, um, to opening our Lowline Lab, which is our biggest uh, effort to date to open this space. We originally called ourselves the Delancey Underground because we were so, I don't 
know, hyper conscious of uh, you know the High Line, right? People love that thing. There's a lot of people that like have problems with it as well. And like, this is a very different project. You know, we are reclaiming um, transit space. We are a nonprofit organization, in that we are also the same. But I think the similarities tend to stop there. You know, what we're doing is all about technology and, and all about design. It's the, at the very heart of the project. We were a little bit wary about drawing too direct of a comparison. But, you know, that said, the very first piece of press that ever came out about us just said, uh, yeah, they're calling themselves this, but really they're at the low line, right? And so, like, you know what? If you can't fight it, you can't fight it.